Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, I want to talk to you about confronting demons because a lot of people are getting way too cocky when it comes to the spiritual realm. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis so you're notified of a new gospel message because of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with a bell with a parenthesis. So let's get started. So right now I am in New York City and I am about to go meet up with somebody from the Crack Your Bible family. And if you are ever interested in those meetups, you will have to find them on Instagram, on our Facebook page, or on our intercessory prayer team, which is strava.com slash clubs slash slash crack your Bible. Those are the only three places I will ever post them for safety reasons as I travel around, like where the next meetup is going to be. But anyway, I want to talk to you all about confronting demons because we are talking about Lunar New Year and I promise we are going to finish that series. It's just, it is a lot of study and I am uh, a little over my head. This was a more um, ambitious project than I realized when I first started filming. But there's so much paganism involved, and I know a lot of people get really excited when we start talking about spirits, about demons, about idols, and things like that. And they think that they're going to just show up into somebody's house who practices paganism. They're going to go into a temple. They're going to tell demons or Satan to manifest in front of them so that they can run and tell that and they're going to tell him off and he has, you know, they're going to tell him a piece of their mind and all this stuff. And I'm here to tell you, stop being stupid. Hosea 4, 6 tells us my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And we have so many Christians today who aren't actually Christians. They identify as Christians because, oh, I was born a Christian. You can't be born a Christian. You were not born a Christian. You were of your father, the devil, because we all come from that fallen seed. We all know that Adam put himself under Satan's authority. And because we are children of Adam, we're under Satan's authority until we decide, you know what? No, I reject that. And I'm going to now follow God. And that way we become adopted sons into God's family. We're adopted, adopted into God's family. To be adopted, that means you were born from somebody else and you're either of Satan or you're of Jesus. And we can't be born of Jesus from the get-go. So we have a lot of people, they self-identify as Christians, but they're not. They are still under Satan's authority. They're not a part of the family of God. So they don't actually have that authority that they think that they have. And what I see is a lot of Christians who are... They're going to get their butt handed to them. So I want to talk to you a little bit about confronting demons because we talked about this in my series on speaking in tongues with my dad because my dad had been really cocky and really stupid and he told demons in just one city in Texas like, hey, you need to show up. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do something that stupid. And in that series, we talk about all of the problems that came with dealing with the demonic distractions that happened because of my dad's own cockiness and his own stupidity. And I see Christians today because I've been receiving a couple emails. This is not just one person. This is a couple people who have emailed me specifically today talking about how they're going to confront Satan. And I'm here to tell you, do not do that. Because when we go look at scripture, Remember, our foundation is scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. Scripture tells us what we need to do in our life today. But in scripture, we see in Daniel 10, there is this unnamed angel that was giving Daniel a vision. And he said, hey, I would have been here faster. But the prince of Persia, he resisted me for 21 days and Michael had to come in and help me. So if an angel is going up against just a simple archon a prince of Persia, and this demonic prince was able to hold off an angel for 21 days, and it wasn't only until Michael came to assist this angel that they were able to give a vision to Daniel. Not even like, hey, we're doing anything else, just to give a vision to Daniel. Do you really think that you, as a brand new Christian, or somebody who's unsure in your walk, or, you know, you are just... Uh, getting to understand like the spiritual realm, do you really think that you're going to be able to go up against 
any of these demons? The answer is no. There's a reason that God tells us in his word that pride comes before fall. Because, you know, I see a lot of Christians acting like uh, the seven sons of Sceva, where they see other people casting out demons who are believers, and they're not believers, so they just say the same words as if it's an incantation. Now, remember, there was a man who was full of demons, and this Jewish priest had seven sons. His name was Sceva. So his son said, you know, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. And what did the demon say? He said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? And he beat them so bad that they ran out of the place naked. If you think that seven of you, seven unbelievers can go in against one demon, you stupid because you're going to get your butt handed to you. So Christians, I want to reiterate this. God does not act out of turn. God does not act outside of the bounds that he has been given. There are parameters that God respects. And if you don't want God in your life, God is not going to interfere in your life. He's not going to come in and swoop in and save the day when you've said, I don't want you in my life. So you as a Christian, you cannot go into a pagan person's home and say, demons, you're not allowed to be in here because it's not your house. God is not going to interfere in that person's home and protect them when they have made a choice to follow Satan. You as somebody who does not live in that house, somebody who does not own that house, you don't have the legal right to tell demons you're not allowed in here. This isn't your place. You don't get to tell them, hey, you're not allowed in when the homeowner is inviting them in. As a Christian, if you decide to put yourself in that situation, you need to pray over yourself to make sure that you're protected. But if you're going into a place that you know is pagan, a temple, somebody else's home, you know, an actual school that is for all of this occult stuff, you have to pray over yourself. And honestly, most Christians shouldn't even be in those situations because you're just not ready. But on the flip side, I also want to mention this when it comes to getting rid of occult items. Now, we talked about this before uh, in a video about getting rid of occult stuff, which you can check out right here. Do not break other people's stuff. Do not get rid of other people's stuff. If it does not belong to you, do not touch it. It is not yours to throw away. It's not yours to command demons to come out of. It's not yours. So if it's not yours, if you don't own it, if you're not the legal and rightful owner of these things, you're not allowed to touch them or break them. As a believer, you can say, you know, your powers have no hold over me. You're not allowed to, you know, harm me in any sort of way because sympathetic magic does exist. Sympathetic magic is where uh, there's something that is cursed and if you come into contact with it, that curse can go on to you. So as Christians, we have to be aware that yes, the spiritual realm exists, curses exist, uh, magic exists. And as Christians, we have to realize that God acts within the parameters. He respects the parameters that other people give him saying like, hey, I don't want you in my life. And he's like, okay, then I'm not going to interfere and give you blessings and uh, make sure that you're safe. But demons... They don't respect boundaries. They don't respect parameters. So you as a Christian have to realize that a person who is demonic, somebody who um, interacts with the spiritual realm, somebody who is into the occult, yeah, if they walk into your home, they could put curses on it. They could say things over your kids and demons are going to, you know, interact on their behalf. For those things but if you do it on the flip side on the reverse god is not going to disrespect somebody's autonomy and interfere in their life if they want to invite demons in they're going to suffer the consequences of those actions and christians need to realize that you can't save people from themselves if people want to be in the occult if people want to dabble with demons they're going to suffer the consequences of it but in the meantime that is not a license for you to be stupid and call on demons, demanding them to show themselves to you, or even more stupid, commanding Satan to show himself to you, because I promise you, you cannot handle it on your own. The only way that we overcome the adversary is through the power of Jesus Christ. And if you think that you're going to do it any other way, or that you should just do it flippantly because you want to run your mouth to these demons, you're stupid. 
there's no other bones about it. You're being stupid. And we are to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So Christians, when it comes to the spiritual realm, I want you to be wise. I want you to pray over yourself. I want you to make sure that you're not putting yourself in stupid positions. But also, I want to make sure that you don't think that you can override somebody else's autonomy. If somebody wants to bring occult items into their own household and use them over their own children, that's their prerogative. So as a Christian, we have to realize we can't save people from themselves. People have a right to bad decisions. But remember, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So if it's your own household, yeah, you have every right to tell demons you have to leave. I would never tell them to manifest in front of you. I would never word it in such a way as where you're challenging them. It's just as a believer, I have the authority to tell you that you are not welcome here, that you can't be my home, that you are not allowed to touch my kids, that you have to leave in the name of Jesus. There is a difference between telling a spirit that they have to leave and telling a demon to manifest. So I really want to make that clear as we talk more about the occult and demonic spirits and the spiritual realm. So keep that in mind. Realize that you can't save people from themselves themselves and that yes there are consequences that come with uh, dabbling with the occult and as Christians we need to be aware of it and we need to respect the fact that if it wasn't for God and his angels surrounding us Satan would rip us apart so we don't go looking for a fight but we will finish it so if you do want to know how you can finish those fights do make sure that you check out our series about praying in tongues, which is right up here. And I would love it if you would like, subscribe and share, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.